right, so I've got another update on the RC car today, but first I just want to say I hope you're all well. Obviously the world's in a bit of a situation at the moment, and I hope you're all being sensible and smart, staying home, looking after yourselves and others. So let's get straight into the video, and I'm just going to give you a bit of an update on where I am in the CAD at first, and then I'll take you over to the workbench. So you can see I've made some significant progress since last time. Um, this is the rear subframe of the car, and I've pretty much got most of it done now. So I'm currently just working on the one side of the car because it makes sense to get the one side right first. And it's going to involve some sort of draft printing just to see if everything fits together properly because there are tolerances with 3D printing. You can see I've now got a lot of this done and if I rotate it around for you, you can see I've now got the shock mount here and this all bolts on from the underside. So you can see I'm using um, cap head screws as well so they sit nice and flush with the surface. And also I've changed the bracket a bit so they're angled out. This gives a bit of better movement with this um, dog bone coupling. You can see if I move the hinges, I've actually got that working and the shock is moving as well as you go up. Now the only thing I couldn't get working in Fusion was to simulate the compression of the spring. I just couldn't get that to work or find a way to do it, at least a simple way. So for now I've just left it as it is and you can see the spring is just moving up. But that's not really a huge issue. So you can see as well that I've added the wheel on. It's just to give you a sort of scale um, perspective of how big this thing's going to be. It's going to be around one tenth scale roughly because I'm designing it myself. You know, the parts are going to be whatever size I want them to be. But you can see the wheel and uh, that also moves as I move the um, wishbone up and down. There's still a few things I need to do. For example, you can see I've left a, a hinge kind of piece here and that's going to be needed to stabilize the camber of the wheel. And there's also an attachment hole here, which I've still not fully thought about, but I'll explain a bit more about that now when we go over to the workbench. This is the first draft print of what you've just seen in the CAD software. So, you know, for a first attempt, this turned out great. I'm really pleased with it. There's a couple of things that I found out um, that I need to change, which was the whole purpose of this. So you can see, for example, the movement there in the suspension arm. It's just a lot of wiggle. And that's just due to me purposely leaving more than enough room for the um, the shaft going through there because there's tolerances with 3D printing and a 3mm hole may actually be smaller than a 3mm hole and then you don't have that f f um, freedom of movement. So I left them slightly bigger and now what I can do is go back into the software and tweak everything so it, it's all nice and um, compact. We've also got the same issue here on the knuckle so you can see in there it's basically the exact same setup, but I've just got a bolt going through, holding the knuckle in place. But you can see there's a little bit of wiggle there. And again, that's because I purposely left the holes bigger than they need to be. So I'm going to go back, adjust all that stuff. And in the next video, you'll see, you'll see those changes. The main purpose of this draft print really was just to see how the suspension behaves. So if I, I spin it around, it's probably a bit easy to see this way. You can see as the suspension arm lifts up, the shock absorbs it and that's exactly what you want it to do right so you'd be driving along you'd be hitting bumps in the surface and the shock is just taking all that impact and it works really nicely there's full movement there um, they're quite stiff so I may have to change out the spring but I won't really know that kind of stuff until I know the full weight of the car and exactly what kind of um, shock I'm going to need I've also added the bearing into the knuckle, so it looks something like this. This is just a different version of it that I'm working with at the moment. But basically, the bearing sits in there, and that just reduces all the friction so the wheel is able to spin freely. So for example, obviously I don't have the um, dog bone attachment coupled at the minute. If I just spin that, you can see it very freely spins. And that's exactly what you want because it means your motors don't have to do as much work to get the car moving. I can also show you the coupling working. So if I actually just sit the coupling in there, you can see one of the issues I've got at the minute, which I haven't yet worked on, is that can obviously fall out, right? So um, it can just do this. So that's why I've been working on this piece, because you can see this one's got a little uh, bracket piece on there. And one that'll be is just some kind of arm that comes from here and attaches to the shock mount here and that'll just allow me to control the camber of the wheel and it'll also stop the, um, the coupling from detaching. But if I put it in there you can see uh, and I actually spin it you can see that moves in there quite freely it's really nice. 
Um, and again, you can see the bearing doing its work. You can hear a bit of noise, and that's mostly just the universal joint. Because um, you can hear there is quite a bit of movement there. You know, you just wiggle it around. It's got quite a bit of movement. Um, so hopefully that's not going to be too noisy, but it's something to think about. The ESCs arrived last week, and these are the Race Start 120 amps. And I've actually got four of these, and these should be more than capable of delivering the current that I'm going to be pulling. I'm not going to be pulling all 120 amps. But you always want to go way beyond what you're pulling just to extend the lifespan of your components. I've also got this Giant Power 6S battery. This is capable of providing 320 amps continuous current, and it's going to be more than enough for this project. These are the original motors that I plan to test with for this project, but they're nowhere near powerful enough. Um, they're built for drones, high speed, low torque, so I've had to replace these with something better. This is what I'm going to be replacing them with, and these are 480 kV motors, and these should produce more than enough torque to have a lot of fun. So that's where I'm at currently. The next steps are just going to be to replace the motors, fix all these little tweaks in regard to the diameter of the holes, and I also need to sort out that um, support brace to fix the camber of the wheel. Uh, from there I can start doing the other side and then that'll be most of the rear subframe done and I can move on to the rest of the car. The front is going to be a lot more tricky because obviously I need to steer the wheel as well. That'll be very interesting and I'm going to have to come up with some kind of design for the knuckle for that. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.